You'll recall that during the pandemic, uh, more than two years ago, cottage prices soared. People decided, well, why should I be in a city if there's nothing to do? I can work from home. Since then, uh, under the weight of interest rates, we've seen cottages, cottage prices coming down. We're going to focus on Ontario right now, and we're talking to a a specialist, a broker, uh, in the Parry Sound area. Our guest is John Fincham, broker at Remax Parry Sound Muskoka Realty. Uh, just to remind viewers outside uh, Ontario, Muskoka, an area maybe what, three hours drive north of Toronto, depending on the traffic. Um, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me back. Tell us, have we seen a, a major slide in cottage prices? You were you were with us in October. Have things got mm -hmm. worse since then? Not appreciably worse. Um, there's still price erosion in the lower price levels. The the luxury market's still holding its own really well. It's really a tale of two markets. Um, the luxury is actually increasing. Mm. Um, you know, which is surprising in some counts, but under three million—that's where the uh, it's a little rougher for sure. When you say luxury, what? Where do? Where does? Is it three million dollars? That's where. Uh, uh... Yeah, that's where I, I did most of my research was using three million. I cover Muskoka and Perry Sound, so yeah. you know there's actually two different markets. But I use three million as a baseline, and. Um, if if you look at the charts, it, it's it's quite remarkable um, the difference of those two markets. It's it's astounding actually. Wow! And and still accelerating both ways. Um, so that's twelve month. I don't know if you're looking at the charts now. You are, I yep. can't. But um, that's twelve month rolling average. So if you extrapolate that, um, the published median and average prices, which encompasses all price ranges, um, is a little misleading. Why is it? Why are the high-end cottages doing okay in terms of sales volume? Well, I suspect interest rates are not affecting the person buying the ten million dollar Muskoka cottage. They're, right. they're writing a check, um, you know, as opposed to going hat in hand to the bank. Um, so it's definitely it's two completely different buyers, um, mm -hmm. and the higher end stuff is focused on on the big three lakes in Muskoka and Lake of Bays. And, uh, you know, the demand is always there. Uh, you know, it's just completely different markets. Is there a dynamic here, a family dynamic at all? I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, obviously, it can be very difficult for families when uh, the parents die or the, they're left to college. Some, some sibs want to hang on to the college, some don't. They can't always cut a deal. Yeah, and there's there's tax implications as well. You know, for that, uh, I deal with that regularly. It's uh, heartbreaking, actually, because even if they want to keep it in the family, sometimes the uh, the tax situation doesn't allow it because of these price increases. Um, but they're starting to settle out a little bit. Uh, I suspect there'll be a little bit more price erosion in the next little while. So uh, it might be a little easier for people to keep them in the family. Yeah, I, I suppose when when a parent dies, is is it as though the cottage was sold and you have to pay a capital gain on it? Yeah, well, everybody's different. Yeah. I mean, some people have women trust. I mean, there's a thousand different situations, and I'm not an accountant, no, no. but um, then I'll have to do an opinion of value um, for a, you know a specific date uh, to give to the accountants and the lawyers to you know work that out. What about the, the pandemic effect? Um, people thinking, mm. oh, well, I can just carry on my career outside a big center. Has that, has that faded now? Or, or do you think a lot of people are working permanently from the cottages? Quite a few are. I get lots of calls for Starlink, um, uh -huh. uh, which is interesting. And people wanting to know if there's Starlink uh, coverage for working from home in different areas, which uh, is kind of interesting. But um, I think there's still people that want to move up for sure. But you've got this situation where um, the potential buyers are, are here and, and, and your sellers are here <laughs> from a price point and somebody's got to blink. Uh, so it's, it's not all doom and gloom um, as far as uh, cottage market goes. I ran some pretty heavy analytics this morning and 
if you look at search for lake specific or area specific, which is an excellent forward indicator mm -hmm. uh, of the cottage market, it's ramped up almost double last year. So there's a lot of people uh, waiting on the sidelines to, to see what, what happens with prices. It runs usually three to four months out. Um, so that bodes well for spring from a demand, uh, the demand side of the equation. It's whether or not the supply side, mm -hmm. Um, you know, realizes the, the market. Could you give us a ballpark, and I know it varies, but for a, a typical cottage you would deal with, from its pan pandemic peak, how much would it tend to have come down? Well, I get asked that a lot. Um, most numbers that you see kicked around are sort of that 8 to 11%, but that's taken into consideration all price ranges. So if you take out the luxury statement. If you took those charts I, I supplied and extrapolate it, um, you know, you're, you're approaching 20 points right now, some more. Um, one, uh, anecdotally, if I could, just before we came on air, my, my computer dinged uh -huh. and I looked at uh, a Muskoka cottage. I wrote the numbers down because I wanted to get them right. Are you ready for this? Uh, sit down. They listed it for 2.65 multiple price reductions it sold a couple hours ago for 1.25 ouch and yeah but here's the kicker they paid 1.96 so. that's incredible if you take into consideration uh -huh. their costs of buying that cottage the fees the uh the taxes associated with it i mean they ate a million bucks on that deal in two years and they probably that's spent they probably spent money on the darn place as well, and uh, you always. Yeah, I know no details. Yeah. I just have the the raw data. Yeah, yeah. But and it, you know, so there there's there's deals to be had if you can find them. I mean, they had a great agent that knew the market mm -hmm. and didn't budge on the on the price. Sure. Uh, that they offered. So uh, mm -hmm. I th I think that there's there's hope for some buyers if if they've got the right situation and the the right seller for sure.